Traditional healer Musa Kayarianga spent two hours a day for three months learning how to use the Internet. At 65, he now regularly corresponds with French-speaking traditional healers as far away as Canada. He says the benefits of Internet research have had a big impact on his business. I have been able to advertise my work to people in Kampala, to people in Bujumbura, and to people in Canada. I have been exchanging experiences with them, and they now know me. Also, I have improved my knowledge of herbs and trees that I have been using to treat people. Kaya Iranga accesses the Internet at the Nyamata Telecenter, one of a dozen such community-based facilities in Rwanda's countryside. Paul Barrera is the founder of Nyamata Telecenter and also chairman of the Rwanda Telecenter Network. In a telecenter, you can also introduce other programs, community development programs, not only Internet, not only ICT training, but also you can, you can introduce, you can also provide development programs to the community. In, in a telecenter, you are supposed also to help the community how to access useful information that, 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 they can, that the community can use to develop themselves. Setting up telecenters in Rwanda's rural areas is one of many initiatives aimed at providing all Rwandans access to information communication technology, or ICTs. It is part of a $65 million plan to transform Rwanda from a largely agricultural-based society into a knowledge-based one by the year 2020. Patrick Nirishema is Deputy Executive Director of the Rwanda Information Technology Authority. Uh, we're trying to be the hub uh, within this continent. Uh, we're trying to be a services hub. We're trying to be uh, a point of reference for the other countries on the continent uh, in terms of how a third world country can take itself from the state that most people in the world know Rwanda was in 1994 to a middle income status country by the year 2020. So uh, that really is uh, what Singapore has done. The first step is to expand broadband infrastructure to all of Rwanda's 30 districts. Then schools, clinics, telecenters and other institutions in all reaches of Rwanda can be connected to the ICT infrastructure for internet access. Almost 20% of Rwanda's 500-plus secondary schools are already connected to the Internet. The plan is to also hook up the country's more than 1,000 primary schools. Green Hills Academy in Kigali has gone a step further. The prestigious primary and secondary institution is one of 10 schools across the country that has installed the Geographical Information Systems Program, or GIS, into its computers. Students gain detailed knowledge of all the world's countries and regions at the click of a button. Meanwhile, select health clinics across Rwanda are transmitting and receiving information on HIV-AIDS treatment through a network called TrackNet. Cell phones or computers are equipped with special software developed by Voxiva Incorporated. Healthcare workers enter data on HIV AIDS patients, drug stocks and other information and transmit this to health officials in Rwanda's capital, Kigali. At the Nzige Health Center, HIV counselor Jean-Luc Hassan says the system is helping patients. <laughs> This has saved me a lot of time. I used to travel from here to Kigali, and while I was gone, there was no one to attend to the patients. By using the cell phone, I save travel time and money and can attend to the patients. Rwanda faces some major challenges in implementing its ICT plans. Almost all of Rwanda's people live in rural areas, which is largely without the necessary infrastructure. Less than 10% of Rwandans have access to electricity. The huge jump in the number of cell phone subscribers has jammed mobile networks, making them unreliable at times. Yet despite these obstacles, the government is pushing ahead with its vision of transforming the country into a continental ICT hub. Kathy Maitney for VOA News, Kigali.